This is my iPhone 12 Pro. And recently, I was able to obtain a copy of a pretty interesting app. In today's video, we are checking out an app called Old OS right here on my iPhone. If you know me, you know that I love vintage Apple products, old iPods, old versions of iOS, things like that. I just love the iconic Steve Jobs era Apple. Old OS seeks to replicate the look and feel of iOS 4. Here I have an iPod Touch running iOS 4. As a matter of fact, this is the first iPod I ever owned. And this application has recreated most of the apps and experiences within iOS, and it did a great job. So let's check it out. On first launch of old OS, you are greeted with the iconic iOS lock screen of yesteryear, and it's pretty cool. It even comes with a vintage iPhone home button. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, it's got a virtual home button with a little glossy texture on it. And it's pretty neat. If you tap on it, it feels kind of like tapping on the home button of an iPhone 8 where the button doesn't actually click, but the motor inside of the phone actually does the clicking feeling. Let's go ahead and take a look around the app. Number one, what I find really cool is it shows your network provider up in the top corner and your battery percentage, and the battery percentage is accurate. If you swipe down, I really do have 74% battery life. And if you slide to unlock, you're greeted with the classic iOS 4 home screen. It's pretty neat. It's actually crazy to see this on the iPhone 12 specifically because iOS 4 was launched on the iPhone 4, which is where they got the design for the iPhone 12. So now let's talk about some of the stuff that you can actually do inside of this application. Number one, if you open up settings, you will see your actual settings list comes up and you can scroll through it. That's actually the Wi-Fi network I'm on. This is actually the page to go into notifications, though you can't do anything with it. You can actually go into sounds and see the different sounds that were on iOS 4. You can actually toggle things on and off if you are inside of settings. If you scroll down to brightness, you can actually adjust the brightness with the brightness slider. You can do a lot with this application. You can actually dive into the wallpapers and choose one of the default iOS wallpapers from iOS 4. So if you want the classic raindrop wallpaper, you can go ahead and set it to your home screen just like before. And to get back to said home screen, you just tap the home button and you'll see that the change has made an effect right there on the device. Now what's crazy is that a lot of the apps on this application called Old OS actually work. So when you tap on Safari for the first time, it actually takes you straight to the developer's website, which is pretty cool. This whole thing was developed by a 17 year old and it's actually so cool. He's developed a few other apps and he's on Twitter as well. All of his information is linked down there at the bottom. I'm not really a big YouTuber, so I doubt he's gonna get much traction from me, but just in case, that is his Twitter handle and you should run over and check him out on Twitter if you got a second, because he's been working on all kinds of cool projects and if you're trying to get old OS, it's pretty hard to get. They've released six iterations of it just to keep up with it. So he's keeping up with the demand, doing a great job. So just go ahead and check him out if you get a chance, because he's doing an awesome job recreating this. It's really cool. Other fully working applications inside of this is the Stocks app. So you can open up the Stocks. It looks just like the Stocks app did on iOS 4. I'll bring it in for comparison. If you jump in right here, you can see the two side by side. My iPod's actually not connected to the Wi-Fi, but you can see side by side the Stocks app. The only difference is this one is actually up to date and this one hasn't been on the internet in forever. So the stock price of Yahoo and Google, I don't even know if Yahoo's still publicly traded. But the stock price at Google, 800 bucks. It's now 2,527. That's crazy, but look how accurate this is. 
If you compare the two side by side, it's so close. If you go inside of the iPod application, you can actually jump into some of the music that you've listened to and play it. Unfortunately, if you go to songs, it's not quite working and videos doesn't seem to be working for me either, but otherwise it is usable. It's just not usable in the way that I would have used it on iOS 4, but if I go to playlists, all my playlists are there, so I can technically use the music app on this device, which is pretty neat. And the phone application here actually has a completely working phone UI that if you hit the call button, will redirect you to your phone app and actually make the call. So it is completely working, which is pretty neat. Same with the App Store. You can actually open the App Store and browse through applications on the App Store, look at the top trending applications on the App Store. The only thing you can't actually do, or at least I haven't been able to do, is download those said applications. So if you want to download something and you hit that button, it takes you to the legitimate App Store and it lets you download it. So it's just a link and it looks cool and all, but you can't download them into the app, which makes sense because this isn't an operating system. It is just an app. That being said, because Apple provides developers with camera APIs and photo APIs, if you jump into the camera application and you look around, you get exactly the same camera application that you got on iOS 4. You can actually hit the photo button and take photos just like you would. You don't get those shutters that close and you can't tap the icon down at the bottom to get there. You actually have to hit the home button, jump into photos, which isn't a big deal, but you can see the photo you took and it's pretty cool that you can use the camera application just like you would. It's pretty neat actually to be able to do that. Personally, I think this is super, super cool. As a person who is running the iOS 15 beta, as you see here, if I scroll down, I've got all my new focus features. I've got all the new weather information in the app. As a matter of fact, I've already done an entire video talking about iOS 15. And as much as I love iOS 15, it's really awesome. You should check out my full video. It was a live broadcast where we just talked amongst each other and looked at some of the new features. Um, iOS 4, really cool. And it's super cool to see it on the iPhone 12, to take advantage of that iPhone 12 hardware, the 12 megapixel camera, the larger retina display, the one million to whatever contrast ratio. It's really cool to see all of that on this version. So if you are able to get the beta, I totally recommend downloading it, giving it a shot, because it is really awesome really worth the time to check it out. It's completely free and completely open source. So if you wanna download the Xcode project and modify it and work on it yourself, it's really neat. Check it out if you get a second. I love this and I hope you guys do too. It's really, really awesome. So hopefully you're able to get in. I had a pretty hard time getting into this, but was fortunate enough to jump into the beta when I got it. So it works really well. It's really cool and I hope you enjoy it. If you wanna see more of my iOS 15, coverage go ahead check out my previous video and if there's anything you want to see drop a comment down below hope you enjoyed this i will catch you real soon peace